Hi, and welcome to a video on cell growth and proliferation. In this video, we're going to look at how cells grow, which is also called hypertrophy, and also how cells proliferate, which is called hyperplasia. And you must understand the difference between these two, because tissues and organs can increase in size and mass by either increasing the size of their cells or the number of their cells. In single cell organisms, cellular growth and division depend upon the environment. That is, it is dependent upon the availability of food, the temperature and the available space. For example, bacteria such as Escherichia coli can double in 20 minutes and yeast can double in 1.5 hours if conditions are favourable. In multicellular organisms, cell division can take 30 minutes. It may take 12 hours for epithelial cells that line our guts, 24 hours for skin fibroblasts and up to one year for hepatocytes, liver cells. Interestingly, the neurons in our bodies never divide, but we can produce new neurons through cellular differentiation. OK, so let's have a look at cell division, mitosis. The cell spends very little of its life in mitosis, as it spends most of its time in interphase, the time between mitosis. The two significant events of the cell cycle are S phase, when the chromosomes double, and M phase, when the chromosomes separate into the daughter cells. The cell cycle can be split into four phases, S phase, chromosome duplication, M phase, separation of the chromosomes, and two gap phases, G1 and G2, which separate the S and the M phases. And it's during the gap phases that the cell grows and makes the proteins. The order of the phases are G1, S, G2 and M, and combined G1, S and G2 make up the interphase. The M phase can be observed under the microscope. As I said earlier, the cell spends most of its life in interphase, and it's during this phase that the cell performs all its normal cellular functions and undergoes growth. During interphase, a cell replicates its proteins, makes the RNAs that it needs, and also creates and maintains the organelles. The cell cycle in somatic cells is tightly regulated. However, during embryogenesis, the cycle is free running as cells need to be produced quickly. That is, the G1 and 2 phases are compressed. And you can see this in the development of the embryo because the fertilized oocyte does not increase in size as cell numbers increase. That is, the cells don't have the time they would normally have in the gap phases to make all the new proteins, membranes, RNAs, etc. they would need to grow in size. So how is the cell cycle controlled? Well, imagine this clock face here. The hand on it is controlling the cell cycle. We start here. And through G1 phase, we make all the proteins, membrane, etc. that we need. We have growth. At the end of G1 phase, but before the S phase, a phase point often called GO, the cell asks the question, is the environment favourable for division? Is division needed? Is there a signal saying I need to divide? If the answer is no, then the cell stays in the G1 phase, the GO phase. And this is where the cell spends most of its time, in quiescence. If the answer is yes, then we kick off the cycle and move to the S phase and duplicate the DNA. And during the S phase, the cell runs checks on its DNA to make sure it is not damaged. And if it is damaged, it will repair it and continue or kill the cell if the damage can't be repaired. If everything is okay with the DNA, the cell will then move into the G2 phase, then finally onto M phase before returning to G1. Now, experiments have shown that the M phase is dominant. That is, injections of cytoplasm from cells in M phase are enough to drive the process. And it turns out the cytoplasm contains a protein called MPF, mitosis promoting factor, also sometimes called maturation promoting factor. MPF contains two subunits, cyclin and cyclin dependent kinase. The cyclin-dependent kinase, or CDK to its friends, is a kinase, which means it adds phosphate groups to serines, threonines and tyrosines in specific amino acid sequences on other proteins. The cyclin, of which there are four types, is a regulatory and targeting subunit, and the four different types undergo rounds of synthesis and degradation during the cell cycle. The different cyclins are G1S cyclin, this activates CDK late in G1. S-cycling, which binds CDK at the start of S phase and helps drive chromosome division. 
M cycling, which activates CDK at the G2M transition, and G1 cycling, which controls the G1S cycling. In fact, it is these changes in the level of the four different cyclins that drive the cell division process. Now, please remember that it is the role of the different cyclins to not only bind and activate the CDK, but to also position the CDK next to the correct protein that requires phosphorylation to drive the next part of the cell cycle. That is, the cyclin activates and targets the CDK to the right protein. Finally, I must just mention checkpoints in the cell cycle. The cell checks the DNA for damage during the cell cycle, and it is the presence of this damage that can halt the cell cycle, along with unreplicated DNA and chromosomes that have not attached to the spindle. And these DNA events exert their control through inhibiting the different MPFs at different stages of the cycle.